based on one of those stories that would seem utterly ludicrous were it not true, Argo is an intelligent thriller that reinforces Ben Affleck's newfound reputation as a director to be reckoned with. In 1979, when the Shah of Iran was overthrown by followers of Ayatollah Khomeini, six workers from the US Embassy in Tehran escaped their compound before it was overrun, eventually finding sanctuary in the home of the Canadian ambassador. Fearing they would be treated as spies if caught, but unable to extract them via any conventional means, the CIA hatched an audacious plot. The six would be extracted from the country under the guise of a Canadian film crew, searching for cheap Middle Eastern locales in which to shoot a Star Wars knockoff. If they were going to sell this to the revolutionaries, however, it needed to look unquestionably real. While completely devoid of any hero bursting through a plate glass window to save the day, the film is an incredibly exciting journey, charting the race to assemble a convincing film production in LA, while the revolutionary guards draw ever closer to the house guest's precarious hiding place. It's easy to criticise Ben Affleck, whose easy-going, middle-of-the-road charm made him one of the most bankable leading men of the last decade. Now that press interest in his private life and critical whipping of ill-advised star vehicles seem to be a thing of the past, however, he has quietly begun the road to rehabilitation, stepping behind the camera to direct well-received crime films Gone Baby Gone and The Town. While he doesn't draw overt attention to his style, he directs Argo as a loving throwback to 70s political thrillers, injecting the right sense of pace to make it seem faintly retro, without resorting to kitsch gadgetry and big hair, at least not much. In addition to directing, Affleck also stars as Tony Mendez, the laconic CIA exfiltration specialist charged with organising the operation and making it look convincing. Despite receiving top billing and appearing in all the posters, Affleck actually underplays the role to good effect here. The ice-cool nature of Mendez as a character makes him seem remote at times, but he is not the focus of the film. Never the flag-waving hero, he is a gloomy, monosyllabic professional who fades into the background when surrounded by the larger-than-life Hollywood fixers he needs to make the production look real. Despite the tension, the LA scenes are also frequently very funny, filled with schmoozy portraits of movie industry bigwigs, all utterly oblivious to the real purpose of Argo, this terrible film gestating in front of them. These make for surprisingly effective respite from the Iranian scenes, all the more so in that the film marries its humour to the horror without the contrast ever jarring. While the cast is excellent all round, I feel it's actually Alan Arkin as ageing producer Lester Siegel who really steals the show. His best years behind him, Siegel seems relegated to attending meaningless award ceremonies until Mendez comes calling. Flush with newfound purpose, the fiery vigour with which he secures a script and organises publicity for a film that will never exist is great fun, ensuring he takes the lion's share of best lines. Honourable mention is also due, however, to the great Brian Cranston as a good-hearted CIA suit in charge of hand-wringing and phone-slamming back at base. In all honesty, I find it quite difficult to fault the film. It certainly has attracted some criticism for sexing up the finale to the camera, yet the last act in which the ersatz film crew must live their alter egos during a terrifying location visit to the bazaar then ultimately bluff their way past airport security, is so beautifully handled that any critique of its historical accuracy seems like mere nitpicking. Ultimately, Argo is a superbly acted and well-executed film that manages to swing deftly between humour and drama with nary a hitch. Ben Affleck is dead. Long live Ben Affleck. <laughs>